Hello everybody and welcome back to Movie in a Haunt if you are from YouTube and welcome to the first episode of Movie in a Haunt on Podcast Services. I'm RJ. And I'm Paige. And today we are talking about Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Dream Warriors. <laughs> they don't want to dream no more. What is this, 1986, 1985? 86. Okay. Very, you want to know I, um, a little fun fact? Okay. This is our first 80s movie since My Bloody. Okay, I was going to say. It's been a while. And also, this is our only, like, mid-slash-late 80s horror movie of the entire season. Okay. It, we really went away from the 80s for a long time. It feels, I was, while we were watching it, if I was thinking, it feels really good to be back. You know, in like early early horror, you know. Yeah, but I mean, like our only '80s. So we've only done '80s five times, and four of them were Friday. <laughs> That's still a lot, though. But I mean, I I, I like the True, feels but it's of the it. Same thing. Yeah. And this is like wacky '80s. This oh, is this is beyond wacky. Like when you think '80s horror, this is what probably comes to mind in the sense of '80s. But before we get into the movie, let's talk about the trailer and how 80s it was in the sense of it didn't show um it didn't show any of the movie but it got you hyped if you knew what the franchise was for sure um i really liked it uh okay so i have a thing i have three things that i really hate in horror movies because it scares me creepy children dolls and clowns those are my three no-nos this movie hits two out of the three I mean, if you look at some of the makeup on some of these people, it kind of could hit three out of the three. That's true. Um, but we get we get the song. We get a nice little, you know, panoramic view of the, the dollhouse. And then we get the nice jump scare of Freddy's iconic knife hand. Yes. This is the movie that made him a pop culture icon in the 80s. Really? He was very popular. Um, he... So you ready for a fun fact? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the reason why New Line bought the rights to Texas Chainsaw. Really? In the 80s. Yep. Um, f uh, Nightmare did so well. They were like, okay, let's, instead of like making a new franchise, let's just fucking buy a franchise. Yeah, I mean, it's easier they that bought, way. They bought it. And they, fun fact about, because we're never going to watch that uh, Leatherface Texas Chainsaw. Uh, that movie, they released a trailer of him force pulling a, chainsaw out of like a lake and the reason why they did that was because when they put the trailer out they didn't even have a screenwriter let alone like an idea plot. yeah wow and then the movie tanked Obviously. and the movie tanked so bad that so basically the way a lot of the contracts work is as long as you make a movie in x amount of years you keep the license like, that's what um, i think miramax did with uh hellraiser they made like a shitty ten thousand dollar movie straight to video no marketing but it let them keep the rights texas chainsaw 3 was such a flop like a bomb that they let the rights expire yikes because you know he's not freddy freddy is kind of like a lightning in the bottle character he talks that's the thing he's the slasher who can actually talk mm -hmm. him and chucky oh yeah, yeah. The they're in the same battery. vein though you know what i mean they are but what did you think of the however trailer? Um, I, I imagine like seeing it in theaters and I'd be like, oh, I know the song it's here. Um, I probably would have been more excited if it wasn't like a one year gap mm -hmm. between two and three. Cause two is, it, what, what, what did two at some point? Because two is that equivalent thing of like, what if Freddie represented gay panic? Hmm. Okay. And then the studio is probably like, you're right. He can represent gay panic. And then we can have a woman save him at the end to show people that straight is right. And you're like, no, no, no. It's just, he's gay panic. I mean. He's scared of it. There's a lot of, you know, Catholicism fear in this movie. Yeah. I mean, we'll go ahead and talk about it later. And, you know, even the Dungeons and Dra Dragons panic back in the 80s. So it makes a lot of sense what they're trying to do. Yeah. yeah, but um, here's the thing. 80s trailers, eh, they never really do it for me. Okay, that's fair. Um, 
but I love this movie. All right. You want to get into it? It's my movie. Let's do it. All right, all right. In 1987, a year after the events of the previous film. Oh, it's only a year after Nightmare 2? Shit. Teenager, Kristen Parker, dreams Freddy Krueger is chasing her. Let, <laughs> hey, that sentence is very poor. Um, let's, <laughs> let's break this down a little bit because you were having a breakdown at the beginning already with the paper mache. <laughs> okay, so we're watching the movie together and we have our headphones on. I hate the sound of the squishy squashy paper mache glue sound just squish 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 right in my ear holes i hate it the best part was when it began you're like are we making an evil cake <laughs> yeah because it looked like she was making cake batter and i was like oh what okay and it turned out to be glue now you know my pain of watching the fridays with my headphones on and hearing people suck tongue <laughs> For like nonstop, you know my pain now. This is in the same area of grossness for me. Um, so we get her building a house. Also, it's like two minutes of paper mache, and it's just it's a lot, <coughs> a lot of squelching. <laughs> and then she starts to fall asleep. So she drinks instant coffee powder and downs it with diet coke. Yeah, she shoots the coffee and then just chases it with a diet coke. I mean, that's commitment. Aspartame. Yeah. <laughs> and the best part, you were like, it's probably that was just probably cocoa powder. Yeah, like, yeah she stood down in cocoa powder with Diet Coke. Yeah. A little bit of Nestle. Also, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, sponsored by Diet Coke. It was everywhere. Oh, I didn't notice. I only noticed it in this scene. It was here. It was on Kincaid's bed. Um, it was where uh what's her name was when um one of the characters gets put through the tv oh yeah she when had she's a, watching she had TV. diet coke i they were in nancy's house like four times one of those four times had to have diet coke gotcha um miller's beer is was in the movie nissan was like egregious mm -hmm. um those are the only ones i can like remember off the top of my head oh and no 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 it's not D D. they renamed it yeah but uh yeah but yeah she Falls asleep. Woo. And then Paige's nightmare begins. <laughs> Go ahead and describe my nightmare. It begins, and all you hear is the lullaby. She's like, I hate creepy children. <laughs> and I'm like starting to like laugh. I'm like, oh, once this camera pans, it's a it's a gaggle of creepy it children. It is a gaggle. Waiting for you. <laughs> um, and then, he, you know, she chases a little girl into the house Carrie's like she, you know, there's a chase scene we get the little tar the tartar and then I forgot this it's very brutal um the people hanging oh yeah I was a little shocked that by that brutal and then she's like you're hurting me and it's a skeleton mm -hmm. <laughs> also I love how like the, when this movie gets ridiculous it gets so fucking ridiculous they're not afraid to go there you know what I mean oh I love it after that she wakes up and he attacks her in her bathroom after she thinks she's already awoke. That is not... I don't think that's proper sentence, proper sentence point structure. Making it so... It, making it look like she slit her wrist in the real world. That grossed me out, too. It was... Yes, it was... Oof, I couldn't look. There's a lot of body I, horror in this movie. Yes. So if, if that's not something you're into, which is usually me... I used to be fine with it when I was younger, but for whatever reason, now that I'm older, I got weak. <laughs> <laughs> um, and any type of body horror, I, I can't look at the screen. Um, I will say, of all the movies we've done so far, I've never seen you squee like scream right? as much as you have in this movie. You screamed probably once every 20 minutes. Yeah, it, it like. was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Um, believing Kristen to be suicidal, her mother admits her. Oh my God, On I forgot delay. one thing. <laughs> On delay. <laughs> Her mom, that's like her mom's line. She's like, come on, go to bed. On the light. On the light. And it's so white lady. It it's so like middle-aged oh, white lady. It's it just like, come on, on the light. <laughs> it's so white. It's like saying like a quesadilla is a quesadilla. It's like, it it's is. that equivalent. It is. Or like a taco. Uh, yeah, a taco. <laughs> 
Believing Kristen to be suicidal, her murder admits her to Western Hills Psychiatric Hospital. Also, very middle-aged white lady reaction. Let's send her to the psych ward. Mm -hmm. Where she is placed under the care of Dr. Neil Gordon. At the hospital, Crispin fights the orderlies who tried to sedate her because her fears of falling asleep. This is where we get introduction to, like, the cast. And we have, like, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. We have Patricia Arquette. We have Le uh, Heather Landingcamp. It, has, it is a lot of people. It's loaded movie. for a third film in a, in a franchise, you know? This is the one that Wes came back for, though. He, uh, I think he co-wrote and produced it. Yeah. So. Pretty cool. I, I wonder the, why. The I wonder one. why he came back. Because the second one was, like, I don't think the second one was well-liked. Mm. And I bet I, I bet you amount of money, it wasn't that thing of, like, um, it probably wasn't him being like, oh, I want to come back. The, the new line was probably like, hey, if you write this, we'll make your next film. How about that? And then I bet you my money that's how it, how it happened. The new intern therapist, Nancy Thompson. Also, you know what? Hold this. Let me get to Nancy. Talk about, like, natural progression to what happened to this character to where they go. A hundred percent. Um, I... If you want to talk about it now, we can. How you mentioned at the end, because I was upset with what happens with her character. But you made a good point about for a final girl, she had a full character arc. Um, yeah. So she goes through what she did, what she says like six years ago, and she runs with it, right? So she's like, I can help people because Freddie will be attacking others. So she does her research. She's getting her degree. And then she comes and interns for these kids. Um, I I really did like that a lot. I feel like because I fun fact the reason why uh, Sydney has never been killed is because Wes did really regret killing Nancy. Is he on record with saying that? He is on record for regretting the Nancy kill. Did he um, say why he regretted it? Um, I don't remember why he regretted it. I I naturally just think it's because. In a way, the franchise dies mm. after she's dead. Like, if you kept her alive, you at least had directions to go. Um, in order to bring her back, it had to be Heather Landingcamp is playing Heather Landingcamp in, you know, a meta version of Nightmare. That's how you got her back. Right. And I understand the problem in being upset that you killed her because you're right. You kind of lost the heart of the franchise and, you know, you, you, there's only so many times, like, so long you can, like, kind of run in place until, you know, shit starts to get boring. But I feel like if she stayed around for four, five, six, and all of that, that would have ruined her character. I agree. I mean, it's, it's walking a fine line, right? So yeah. if, with the Halloween franchise, if you killed Laurie Strauss... Strode. You, you miss that heart. But they also, you know, kind of fudged her character later on, right? So you get the good with the they bad. They did. But they're coming but, back with that now with the with the, with the the new movies. Um, yeah. And then we'll go with Scream with Sydney. I think her character arc is, you know, a nice pace, but it is kind of flat, you know? Yeah. And um, when I said character gets goes into a profession that's natural for them mm -hmm. that was a dig at Sydney. oh no 100 percent. yeah <laughs> she's yeah. like i'm gonna be a theater major. an actor <laughs> and, and then i'm gonna write yeah and then i'm gonna be a mom and i'm like the mom is the most normal thing you have done for your character yeah. um but also counterpoint to your uh halloween thing Halloween four, she's dead in Halloween four, and Halloween four is like one of the best Halloweens. Like they were, they can get by without Laurie. And if I remember correctly, like I enjoy Nightmare Part four. Mm -hmm. Um, but you you do kind of understand that this is kind of where the franchise probably stops for a few people. Gotcha. Um, the new intern therapist Nancy Thompson calms her down and befriends her by recite, reciting part of Freddy's nursery rhyme bonding moment oh yeah now see this is uh, what i like i like when if you're going to be going in the direction of having a new final girl um i like when they have them bond so the original and the new one and then obviously it's a progression um unfortunately what this was patricia's only friday and only what horror movie basically only nightmare yeah when on friday 
Um, yes, you want you want to know you want to know a spoiler? Sure. They recast her in the next movie and kill her off in ten minutes. So they pull what's her face from Friday. Kill her off in the first scene. Yes. Why? Um, hence is why a lot. I don't know because the thing is, Kincaid is back and Joey is back, and they also get killed in the first ten minutes. Why? I think that's why for a lot of people they don't look at four and five and six as like they kind of stop at three for a lot of people I know. Nancy is introduced to the rest of Dr. Gordon's patients. Philip, a habitual sleepwalker. Kincaid, a tough kid from the streets who is prone to violence. Jennifer, a hopeful television actress prone to cigarette burns. Will, who uses a wheelchair due to prior suicide attempt. Taryn, a recovering drug addict. And Joey, the youngest, who is too traumatized to speak. He's mute. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this. How many movies? Period. And also, this is West, This is a Wes Craven thing, because Scream 1 did this very well also. Gave a character to every single character, no matter their importance to the story. Everybody, I was like, I know who each character is. Right. Yeah, they all, um, had a, they all had a backstory. They all had a drive and also something that brought them to where they are. And you understand that. Uh, even if we only get a couple of scenes with them, like, we know that Jennifer's you know, a quiet girl, but she has hopes to be a famous actress. And uh, there's duality there, and I like that as an example. And the one good thing they did was you could tell they were like, okay, this character's going to die first, this character's going to die second, this character's going to die third. So the characters that were going to die quickly, they did their entire arc yeah. in that time. And then the characters who were going to live longer, they kind of let the arcs hold off until the characters who were going to die kind of got their arcs in so they can, you know, feel more important to the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Nurse Ratchet <laughs> is important yeah. to the story. One night, Freddy attacks Kristen in her dreams, but she un unwillingly pulls Nancy into her dream, allowing them to escape. This I liked. I liked that Nancy... Uh, Nancy was able to go into her dream like they had this connection already you know um i i don't know for whatever reason i really did like that i love the pig oh yeah it's such a long time on that pig it's just like okay when's it gonna snort but you know what's it crazy is eventually. that they did a lot of practical effects and it's for like one gig like one little gag yes and warm freddy yeah I, I mean i could see where the budget went <laughs> And that's good. You know what I mean? It's good. Like, I, I'm not questioning where this money went to. It went to really good practical effects. Yeah. But also, like, 12 mil in today's world. Yeah. That's what it would have went for. Yeah. I, 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 I know a lot of movies. I can say, like, oh, 12 mil. Nowhere near practical effects good enough. For See, this is also I where, what made one. me happy is that we went back to the 80s where practical effects were, like, you know, the thing to do instead of goddamn CGI shit, you know? You know what's funny? I think Heather Langenkamp helps run a VFX house now. No way. Um, I'm pretty sure her husband, her and her husband run it. That's so cool. Um, if you hear me typing, you know why I'm typing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, I, uh, she's a director. Yeah, a prosthetic makeup coordinator. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, my God. She's a cancer like me. <laughs> But and she's 5'3", like you! <laughs> oh my god, connections! Wow, she seems taller. Yeah, she does. I think it's her, like, presence. Yeah. Um, one night, Freddy... Oh no, we already got to that. Kristen reveals that she's been able to pull people into her dreams since she was young. It's weird because they bring up, like, her dad, and then that never comes back around. Well, it's to show that she had a relationship with her father, and that's why she's not on good terms with her mom. That's all. Yeah. Um, whenever you you say the mom, I'm just like on the on way, the way. <laughs> on the way. Also, her mom. You know when like people make fun of the middle aged white lady today, mm -hmm. it's her mom. Oh yeah, it's her mom. And you know what? Let's just get us out of the way now. I love how this movie stayed true to the '80s. 
with like everything was brown. <laughs> yes, we had the so the wooden paneled walls. We had brown carpets. We had the outfits. God, Jesus Christ, the outfits. Especially, the brightest thing in the movie was Nancy's pink sweater at the end. Yes. That was like the brightest thing this movie got. And and Taryn's dream outfit. Good lord, good lord. But, oh, you mean when she became beautiful? Yeah, when she became and bad. beautiful. And bad. She's B and B. Over the next two nights, Freddie throws Philip off of a roof and kills Jennifer by smashing her head into a television. Now, here's the thing. I didn't know, I didn't remember those two happening so close to each other. Mm-hmm. But now let's get to the first one where uh, Paige winced the entire time. I didn't look at the screen. Get, I couldn't. Because Philip gets marionetted. So, yeah, again, fantastic effects here. Um, so Freddy kind of pulls his, like, main arteries from his arms and his, like, arms and legs and uses him as, like, a puppet because he makes paper puppets, you know, yada, yada, yada. It was disgusting. I couldn't watch it. Also, the stop motion. Yes, the stop motion was amazing. The clay on his face as well, on on the Freddy face doll, really well done. I was, I was very impressed. Um, his death was, it's a shocking death. That's the yeah. thing. It's like for the, the first official death, this is shocking. Yeah. You see him jump out that window, the, the, the window of the, the tower, and it's, it's very upsetting. And then the next one is, uh, Jennifer, which is probably the funniest death. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> it's really good, too. It is. The arms coming out of the television, the head coming out on the top. And he has so he has good. the TV bunny antennas on his head. <laughs> I think the funniest part was you were that happened. You're like, okay, so how are they gonna convince people that like yeah, like she totally jumps into the TV? Yeah, because they they were saying Phillips was a, su- a su- uh, sleepwalking accident, suicide, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, you can pass that off, whatever. But freaking, she's hanging. Her head is hanging in. In the, the hanging TV, her feet are dangling. There's nothing under her feet. There's no way she could have did this herself. There's no way. And at every time someone dies, the group smirk circle gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> like, like they don't let the circumference stay the same. Basically, they kind of shorten the circumference They're just, like, on top of each other by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how, like, right when that first happened, you're like, oh, my God, they have meetings. <laughs> <laughs> like, immediately after the deaths, they're like, group meeting, <laughs> group therapy. I'm like, this is not the time. <laughs> Cause that, but that's the old white lady. That's Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> that's true. <You're> like, <laughs> you are all sacredly gay, and that's why your dreams are killing you. It's your guilt. Go pray it's on it. It's your guilt. <laughs> it's your guilt. <laughs> it's all of that. You did drugs, so that means you're doing it. You know, it's drugs. Fear it's sex. God. It's rock and roll. That's what gets you in this psych ward. <laughs> It's like a parody of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah, 100%. And the best part is, this movie goes so hard into the God Mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, be with God. I was expecting when that nurse leaves at some point for her to just be like, to the dude and be like, be with God. And he just vanishes. (laughs) All I was thinking. That's what I was expecting. All I was thinking, I was like, so where's the priest from Exorcist? Like, are we getting Power of Christ compels you? (laughs) Like, is this where we're going? Basically. (laughs) No, the only priest we got is him <laughs> catching, catching him stealing our crows. <laughs> oh, man. The God references in this is insane. It's astounding. Uh, in their next group session, see, we're back in the groups. Nancy reveals to the remaining patients that they are the last of the Elm Street kids. Okay, this is where I'm going to get picky with the plot. How the fuck did all the Elm Street kids end up in there? And then how the hell did she get the internship at the place with all the Elm Street kids? No one's it? taking, like, no one's making the connections here? That makes no sense. Also, real quick, can we talk about the attempted romantic feelings uh, between Nancy and Neil Gordon? And how much I hated it? I felt like they were very one direction. They're like very one sided. But from Neil? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But still, it- she was just like, I'm sorry you feel this way. I'm here for like advice or to like. No, she was just like being supportive and he was like, I love her. She's like, what, 21 maybe? 
He's 42. Probably 23 at the time. Okay. Well, what? anyways, it's still disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I love how at the beginning, the nurse Ratchet's like, she's, the, she's a genius. <laughs> yeah. We should be so happy she's here. And then, like, she says one thing that she doesn't agree with. She's just like, who the fuck is this young lady? <laughs> the audacity of her. <laughs> she better on delay out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's it the way i just said it that's how they say it in the movie <laughs> on delay i i had to get so white for that <laughs> um oh man when this movie gets dumb this movie gets so dumb oh by the way joey's mute joey also has a tattoo on his face that disappears when we see him again later in the movie yeah i commented on just it when we were watching that. it he has like the the tear on his right side and i'm like why is that here and then and poof it's gone they were probably like, you know what? This, this is stupid. He doesn't need that. And then he has that little, he has his little story with the nurse. Oh, who is like, another obviously one. in her 40s. Another one that's creepy. <laughs> obviously the teenager is obsessed with like the cute nurse. I get it. But then they go there in his dream and I, I hate it. I hate it so much. But that's much. because he wanted it to go there. But also that was Freddy. That was Freddy. I know, but still. Ah. <sighs> The surviving children of those who banded together and burned Kruger to death many years ago. Both Nancy and Neil encouraged them to try group hypnosis so that they can experience a shared dream and discover their dream powers, therefore becoming the Dream Warriors. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about their powers? Let me. Please, let's Here do we it. go. Okay, here we go. Nancy, she's, she, she's final girl, so therefore... That's her power. <laughs> her power is, you know, she's smart. Uh, Neil's power is he's a dumbass, but like now he's like a dream dumbass. Right. So there's a difference. It just carries over. <laughs> um, Kincaid's is he's strong. Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. Kristen. Terrence is that she's beautiful and bad. Yeah. So she has this crazy punk outfit. She has this insane faux hawk. And then she gets yeah. dual pocket knives. Like switch. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say switch blades. <laughs> Will is um, a wizard class from D and D. Oh yeah, we forgot to talk about that. Uh, they were playing D and D in the False. real world. They were playing wizard master. <laughs> sure, it's D and D, um, <laughs> and so he's obviously the nerd. So he's like, I'm a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Kristen becomes um, uh, the Karate Kid. <laughs> Kristen becomes, like, if someone's fantasy of being the Karate Kid, but also being in, like, Bring It On was, like, combined together. Yeah. She's, like, you know what she's, like? She's a Charlie's Angel. Yeah, that's that's her. Her dream is to be a Charlie's Angel. Oh, yeah. But they become Dream Warriors. Isn't that great? They never call themselves Dream Warriors. And you're, you you openly said in the movie, I swear, if they say they're Dream Warriors, I'm done with this movie. They did it for you. Thank God. They knew when you were going to be born, and they were like, okay. We can't have this. We can't have this. In the dream. Oh, my God. It's the best. <laughs> yes. In the dream, Joey wanders off and is captured by Freddy. Let's go. Oh, and how Let's was he go. captured by Freddy, RJ? Please. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. So he looks, so they do a really good way of getting him away before you know everyone's in the dream. Mm -hmm. So he gets pulled to a room by the nurse and she's like, she does that little like neck check where she's like, oh, yeah, come, come follow me. And then she's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with you. I've always been in love with you. With you. That's why Let I come to your strip. room and not because for oh. medical reasons and it's my job. This no bra. It's his dream. Remember? It's his dream. So this is th that's a pass. And a underwear that is up her ass. <laughs> is this what gave it the R rating? The titties. <laughs> if, it, if it was the titties. God, the NBA looked over a bunch of shit and they're like, oh my god, there's titties. No. <laughs> Wes Wes was like, all right. All right. We need to try something new here. <laughs> you know what's you know gonna what get us R rating? Happened? titties <laughs> you know what probably happened he was probably like i want to do all this body horror 
And the producers are going to be like, no. So what if I give the horny producers titties? Perfect. Bravo. Everything else gets allowed. Bravo. Because of the titties. And <laughs> they start making out. Ugh. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's like blah, 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 blah. And then it gets even worse. Now you know how I feel during Friday. <laughs> it, but it. this That's is a child it. and an adult. This True, is a whole which means no-no. It was more tamed. <laughs> the noises were tamed. And Friday, it's two young people sucking tongue, which means they're ravenous towards each other. <laughs> So we're like trying to eat each other's insides through their mouths. At that's movies. what happens here. <laughs> that's false. He just fuses their tongues together. Oh my god! Another and part like, I couldn't look at. This was another part I could not look at. <laughs> he like shoots tongues at all his like his arms and his limbs, and he's like hanging. And when he's hanging, the like the edge edges of the tongues are still like oh, god, just... It was so. It was so good. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, yes, so it looked good. really good, but it was disgusting. So and I know that's the point. Oh, man. And then the bed falls and he's <laughs> hanging over hell. That's basically what's going on. I warned you we were going to get titties, by the way. I gave you a four hours warning <laughs> when we were getting to it. I'm like, okay, titty moment. And then it was happening. You're like, oh, wait, there's actual titties. And I'm like, what the fuck? I gave you titties. I wasn't warning. expecting that from a nightmare movie. I think this is the only nightmare movie that really does it. Makes sense. They were like, after this, no, sorry, Wes, we can't do it again. <laughs> you got one shot here. <laughs> Nancy Neal will relieve their duty. <laughs> <laughs> we're going right there, huh? <laughs> to these people getting fired, you know, it's a normal average day at this war. <laughs> Oh, so, oh, yeah, uh, they wake up, right? Because Nurse Ratchet comes in and fucking the kid who's hanging with the tongues is on the floor. Code blue, man. <laughs> and they're like, Which you know I'm what? Like, is that a reference towards blue ball? No! <laughs> it's an actual code. I know, <laughs> but the fact that that's the reference that they, that like the fucking producers probably were oh. like, they're like, oh, like blue ball? Oh. Oh my god and they're like oh unauthorized group sesh you're fired well first the freaking like 70 year old dude who runs the place is there and nancy's like listen to me and he's like you're a woman i don't listen to those and he's like who the hell is this bitch like <laughs> i've never seen you before i probably signed off on you to be an intern here but what He's like, I like old ladies. You're young. No. <laughs> and then like with Neil, he's like, I guess you're fired. Yeah, but he still has acts. I don't know. This is very confusing. Whatever. <sighs> poor, poor Joey is in a coma. And they get fired. Kristen freaks out. She's like, you can't take Nancy away from me. They put her in the ward and they sedate her. Worst case I mean, scenario. it makes sense. If she's the only person who knew what was going on and, like, the only person who knew how to, like, set everything off. But also, that means Hypnosil's not a thing anymore. Now that they're gone, Hypnosil gets canceled, right. so. Oh, yeah, they were subscribed. Uh, uh, prescribed. Yeah, uh, they were prescribed. <laughs> <laughs> they were prescribed a experimental psycho, uh, psycho drug that Nancy's been taking. Um, that we find they out. They subscribed to Hypnosil. They pay nine ninety nine monthly <laughs> for their subscription. But it's to keep the dreams at bay, so that's off the table. A nun, Sister Mary Helena, tells Neil that Freddie is the is the son of a young woman of the hospital staff who was accidentally locked in a room with hundreds of mental patients. I don't think a hundred who essayed her continually over the holidays. I don't. I don't think a hundred men could have fit in that tower um that's in part five are you kidding me we see it we see are it. you kidding me no we don't see it happening oh. well wait no we kind of do that's we disgusting do. good lord we see her get locked we see her get dragged around we see her get put on the floor i believe oh, and then we see the people like taking turns oh like my it's God. like a line that's horrible yeah it's disgusting it's disgusting Nightmare goes there sometimes Holy where you're God. just like, uh, there's a line. They're way past don't cross it. that. 
And the only way to stop him is to lay his bones to rest. These bones become the best part of the movie. <laughs> them like bones, minutes. them bones. Them bones turns the entire movie into a Mortal Kombat fight. You're not wrong. <laughs> Especially when he wins, because he's just like, hey! <laughs> and then, and then he, like, he like, disintegrates. <laughs> oh... He and Nancy ask her father, Officer Donald Thompson, where the bones are hidden, and he is uncooperative because he has, like, three cigarettes, a beer, a shot. He's been (laughs) drinking since noon. Like, (coughs) he's not a police officer anymore either. He's, like, some sort of security guard. Obviously, he lost his job, which is sad. But also, kind of did to yourself. You killed a man. Yeah, and he's living with the guilt. And his wife died. Yes. And then in denial, because he's like, no, she died in her sleep. Yep, ruined his relationship with his daughter. Hasn't seen her in years. Also, I just want to say this. This is the first char- This is the first actor of Movie in a Haunt that has been in two separate movies that are not franchises. Black Christmas. Black Christmas, he's the cop. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's the first character. He's the first, he's the first actor Yay. to cross over for us. He is... That's drunk, drunker than a skunk when we meet him. Yeah, he's just like, "Hi, <laughs> what are you doing here, Nancy? Great to see you. Who's this <laughs> asshole you're with? <laughs> do, like, do you like the brown walls with the brown <laughs> tables with my brown beer can with the, with the brown clock? Brown. But yeah, uh, she's just like, "Where's? Tell me where the bones are. You know what happened." You hid the fucking bones, mm-hmm. so, like, you definitely know where they are. And he's like, it didn't happen. It's all fake. And she's like, I'm done. <laughs> You're so drunk. I can't do this. I'm out. Oh, they get a phone call. Uh, yeah, they get a phone call. From, what's the girl's name? Tiran? Tristan? What's her name? Tiran. That too? Taryn. Yeah. Taryn. Uh, that they locked Kristen up in the silent room, and she's drugged and they don't have much time so nancy's going to the ward trying to save her and neil's gonna talk some sense into her father basically just punch him and <coughs> put him in the car and go get freddie drive friends. yeah it lets the drunk man drive him at night to to a church yeah he's got to get his supplies yeah she just did the next sentence which was oh. the whole Kristen oh, okay. thing <laughs> Uh, Nancy and the others again engage in a group hypnosis to reunite with Kristen, but are all separated by Freddy. This is probably one of the funniest things because, like, they're in the room where Jennifer died, and all you see is like the blown up television. Yeah, I was like, ooh, this should really be off limits. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what are we gonna do? And, 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 and freaking Nancy's just like, group. <laughs> it's group. the group therapy. It saves everybody. Does wonders for your mental health. <laughs> Oh, what's the solution to our problems? Group therapy. Slash hypnosis. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the little flicky thing that goes back and forth. <laughs> Taryn and Will are killed by Freddy while Kristen, Nancy, and Kincaid find one another. Okay, we gotta skip. We gotta do one the first thing. We go back to, come on, let's go to sleep. On delay. <laughs> yeah. Get back there. And then she gets killed by Freddy. Like, the dream version of her gets killed by Freddy. Her mom. Kristen's mom. Yeah. And what happens next? I sent you a gif. And I was like, I promise you, this is what happens. And it's exactly what happens. He comes, attacks her in the bed. She runs, flips over a wall. Another cut. Crashes through a window. Another cut. Falls down the stairs. It is... This was the moment where you started laughing nonstop. I started laughing nonstop. And this was it. This was full ridiculous oh, moment. Oh, for sure. This is where the movie goes off a cliff. But you see, I can. I usually am like, okay, if a horror movie goes in this direction, I'm like, this is dumb as hell. I hate it. But what I give Nightmare is that it's all about dreams. And anything could happen in dreams. So the more ridiculous, the more I'm like, yeah, makes sense in a dream. Um, also real quick, I really, 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 really liked the effects with her mom's head yes. hanging. It's still really gross. I mean, I, I looked, it wasn't that bad, but, um, looked really, really well done. Uh, not 
Oh, we forgot one thing. What? So at this moment, because the thing is, we skip the church. Oh, yeah. Kneel in the church. <laughs> they get to the church, and he, like, takes this dude's bourbon bottle. It's just like, <laughs> he's like, holy water. Yeah. <laughs> With a side of zest. Just a little bit. You got to get drunk and holy at the same time. <laughs> you know, we're going to make sure it burns for Freddy a little bit. But it's like a good burn and a bad burn. <laughs> And then he's like, I'm going to steal this cross. Yeah, just a straight up, just going to steal a cross from a church. Kind of nulls the holy power, don't you think? But he gave him his license, which is being a good Samaritan. Right. As according to probably some Christian somewhere. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the power of God. <laughs> the, the power of Christ. God, baby. <laughs> power of Christ. Jesus. The trio rescue Joey, but are unable to defeat Freddy because he has become too powerful due to the souls he's absorbed. So... We get the cool burl bur burner scene. The boiler room, sorry. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, um, we get... <laughs> I like how it's like... Uh, Kristen's like, I'm gonna flip kick you. Because that's what I do in my dreams. <laughs> and King Kincaid is like, I'm gonna hit you with a pipe. That's clearly made out of styrofoam. But whatever. <laughs> and then she's like, "Fuck this! I'm stabbing you." <laughs> she's <laughs> like, not... "I've been through this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the right thing and just yeet right through the stomach." Should have worked. And then she's like, "Oh no, he's too strong." And then he rips off his shirt and he has like faces in his that on was his body so of lost cool. Souls. It's all the dead it's really kids cool. that. Uh... Oh wait, did he? He killed. Um... Oh yeah, I, I, I forgot we didn't go back to yeah, that. Let's, let's that finish this quick. one little thing real quick, oh, okay. and then we'll. Um, back. But yeah, the faces on the chest were moving. It was breathing. It looked so well done. I really want to know how they did that. It's probably just a form of like, I think it's probably a prosthetic. Still though, it looked really, really good. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through these kills. First one's Taryn. Um, Taryn was a weird moment because uh, Chonky Boy was trying to decide whether or not he wanted to be inside or outside. So you had to get up and like dictate which one he wanted to do. What do you mean? While Taryn was... Your chonky boy was being a little prissy and being like, I don't know if I want to be inside or outside oh, Oliver, as this scene's going on. Yeah, my cat. Yeah. I was watching the movie. I was watching the movie. <laughs> and all I hear is, Oliver, inside or outside? <laughs> inside or outside? A typical cat thing. What do you want? <laughs> I'm not opening the window. It's raining. <laughs> oh, fun fact. We are recording this in the middle of a tropical storm because... You're stuck inside. What else do you have to We're do? committed. We're committed. And then you... <laughs> I think it's funny because you come back at the worst time <laughs> you can come back. <laughs> and it's her scars have turned into, like, little sucky pores. Okay, so I have that thing, that, like, phobia of... You know, like, oh, I can't even talk about it. Of I, holes? Stop it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know what it is. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. So then these ones in her arms, because she has a history of drug use, um, and that's, like, her trauma here. Uh, it, the holes, bleh, I can't. They they move, and they, like, breathe. Oh, disgusting. Yeah, I love it. Ugh. And then she, she gets basically OD killed. Yeah. And it's really gross because Freddy's like really gross. enjoying And there it. goes, there <clears throat> goes the character with the best wardrobe of the entire movie. Honestly, what a waste. Will was hilarious. <laughs> yes, so you you can go ahead into Will's if you'd like. Uh, so Will's like in a hallway, and Freddy's like, "I got you a special chair," and that chair looks cool. It does. Shit. I want to know how much that cost to make. Probably a decent amount, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. It's probably a decent amount. And then they blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> Waste. They're, they're, he's like, he summons it. He like, he's like, ah, he scratched my leg. I can't get up. I can't on delay. <laughs> um, and then he turns into the master wizard. Good lord. This is embarrassing. And Freddy's like, <laughs> no. You're 3D drawn whatever green lightning doesn't work on me sith lord oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, your tickle fingers can't beat me <laughs> and then he just stabs him in the heart and he's like all right i'm done yeah that's it 
Freddy is getting ready to kill everybody. As he does. Yep, and Freddy returns to attack. Oh, sensing his remains have been found. Freddy appropriates his own skeleton and kills Donald before incapacitating Neil. This is the best. This is it. This is it. This is Army of Darkness shit right here. This is Army of Darkness. This begins oh, with the cars falling and you going, not what's going on? Or, oh my God, you go, are the cars going to start singing? <laughs> <laughs> this movie is so ridiculous. I was waiting for them to start singing. The lights are going to go on. The hoods are going to be the mouths. <laughs> and they're going to do the ooga, 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 chaka. This isn't fucking Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so ridiculous. I could have seen it happening. You know I'm not did wrong. You think, did you think Freddie was going to be like, I'm Mary Poppins now? Yes. <laughs> chim chim cherry and all that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, and then he, he, as the, as the article says, he appropriates his skeleton. And what is the best part of this movie? Oh, yeah. It turns into a Mortal Kombat fight. Fatality and all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, like, Grabs a shovel, starts hitting a dude with a shovel, and then he like uh, Nancy's dad. He grabs his neck and either he grabs either his belt or his crotch. I don't know which one he grabs. I think with the special, like the way it lined up visually in the post, it yeah. was his crotch, and I noticed that. And I was like, mm, that's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> but then I saw like where the thumb was. I'm like, oh, is it supposed to be the belt? Yeah, like, he's like holding him by his belt. But he throws him. Either way, he, he gets impaled. Yeah. Sadness. And then Neo gets hit with a um, with a shovel a few times. Yeah. And falls into the ground. And Skeleton Freddy's like, let me shovel you. Yeah. You have a little dirt on me. <laughs> and then he drops the shovel. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <just laughs> I'm done. Skeletor. He Skeletors it up. Basically. And then he disappears. And up next to in a room of mirrors. Yes. They all get sucked into the mirrors, basically. I, which was, uh, again, very cool effects. Very well was. done. It was. That was very well mm -hmm. done. Um, but then Joey uses his dream power to repel him. Which is... He can talk. Yep. That's it. Donald, Donald tells Nancy that he is crossing over, but he's revealed to be Freddy and stabs Nancy in the stomach and tosses her aside. This is so upsetting. It makes sense, though. I know. So she reconciles with her father, or what she thinks is her father. You know, they love each other very much. She hugs her dad. And Freddy just guts her. And then you're like, this is dumb. And then she gets back up and stabs him in the gut. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. With his own glove. Let's go, Nancy. Freddy, believing Nancy is dead, comes upon Kristen in order to kill her, but a still alive Nancy stabs him with his own glove. Yep. Neil manages to recover and purifies Freddy's bones, killing him. With the power of Christ. <sighs> in a whiskey bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Christ in alcohol. <laughs> mm. Oh. Yeah. Jesus power. I was really upset that Nancy dies. Also, uh, Patricia Arquette did a very good job being, like, really destroyed yeah. that she died. I thought this, because for me, the acting has been pretty subpar the entire movie. I'm just like, whatever. I get it. It's a Friday movie. It's very melodramatic. Very, very. But this was really good. She was very, very convincing that she was heartbroken. I think the line that, like, really was really sad yeah. was she was like, I'm going to dream you into a beautiful dream. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. That is such a – that's an oddly good line for this movie. Mm -hmm. It's what that Nancy deserves. That's a very deserves, oddly good line. You know? But – and the good thing with Nancy is she dies. Her character does not live on to get destroyed. Like, she is just a really good character. She gets her revenge. Who gets, like, a – yep. Yep. Well, momentary revenge. Well, There's a four, five, and six. Yeah. <laughs> After Nancy dies, Christian manages to awaken everyone and return them to the real world. During the patient's funeral, Neil finds Amanda Kruger's tombstone and discovers she is Sister Mary, Sister Mary Helena. Shocker. <laughs> also, you were just like, oh, no, not creepy nuns. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like, you know what? We got to bypass the clown, but we got creepy nuns in their place. Like... And a fear unlocked that I didn't even know. 
a nun in clown makeup. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> She was so white. She it was, was like so much. Uh, that evening, he goes to sleep with the Malaysian doll Nancy gave him in Kristen's paper mache house nearby. Suddenly, Kristen's house lights up from inside, suggesting that Freddy is not completely defeated. And then we get to the credits. G so for those who don't know, there's a full blown music video that RJ made me watch. That is of the theme yes! song for this movie <laughs> that was specifically made. And to be fair, it's not bad. <laughs> it's... I love how Dokken is in this movie twice because they're the music that plays on the radio. Yeah. And then we get Dream Warriors, which was a hit. I do think it was actually a hit song. That's awesome. Again, this is the movie that did very well for Freddy. Um, I do think... We, we should probably have that discussion of um, child murderer becomes pop culture icon. Yeah, I mean. Not Freddy, not Leatherface. They don't even get close in the 80s, really. The guy who's really like he kills children, but he's really funny and charismatic. So, you know, it, it's. Okay, oh, you meant you meant Michael, Michael and Jason. No, I said Jason Leatherface, right? No, you said Freddy. Oh, sorry. No, you're uh, good. Jason, Leatherface, Freddy. I mean, um, Michael. Yeah. yeah. Them. The child murder is the one that's... I can relate to. I can go have a beer with Freddy, <laughs> you know? Fun fact. Uh, Freddy appeared on, like, late night television. Good as, Lord. like, a guest. And this got him his own TV show. Of course it did. Of course it did. Which, it was like a Tales from the Crypt. Oh, okay. But it was narrated by Freddy. Okay. I mean, that's actually... It was really cool. I was going to say that's It was a cool thing. But that ends this perfect movie. It's definitely a film that I've seen with my two eyes, that's for sure. It's perfect, Paige. Okay. Here's the thing. Oh, to me, it's perfect. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I don't <laughs> care what you're going to do. I was... Usually, I'm like, I love this movie, and then I get really scared. You won't. I was not scared. You were not going to like this movie, because I was like... She's going to have fun, and that's all that's going to matter. Yeah. She's going to do something, and she's going to be like, this is ridiculous. And at the end of the day, I know she won't be bored. She will have fun at some point. I didn't know you were going to get as squeamish as you got. Me neither. Um, but do you want to get into our little roundup? Ye. Yeah, let's do it. Ye. All right, let's get this roundup started. Um, this movie is definitely a time. Uh... You could watch it alone, but I think this is one of those horror movies that's definitely a lot more fun if you're watching it with some friends. Um, the practical effects are amazing. The story ain't half bad. Uh, the characters, again, are, all of them are three-dimensional. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous as hell, but again, I excuse that because this has to do with dreams, you know? Uh, it's not the best, but like you said, I did have fun. I did have fun, and the body horror was a little too much for me personally, but that's just me. I'm going to give it probably a six. I feel like a nice six is where I'm sitting. I will allow that. Again, it's it's not bad by any means. I don't think it's bad, but it's not, like, fantastic. And I think it the number got pushed up because of the practical effects. Surprisingly, everyone has good character building. And the song. No, I'm kidding. But the song was good. <laughs> the song gets it to an eight. Oh, thank you. So please okay. tell us why it's a 10 out of 10, sir. Well, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Like, I hope you realize our rating system is completely nonsensical. We've talked about that. Yeah. But this is the first time on podcast services we're informing you. It's nonsensical. It's just how we feel in the moment. And then at the end of a season, I'll be like, this is our rating, and if you go and listen to our current season finale, Paige is like, so I rated it that? <laughs> I have to fix that. <laughs> it changes, depending on the mood of the day, on the hour, quite frankly. That's how it goes. <sighs> this movie, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's probably my favorite 80s horror movie. I love how imaginative it is. I love the effects. Um, I love 
This is like the proto proto scream. I can see that. Cause new nightmare is technically proto scream, but this is what probably comes before new nightmare. Um, this is also the only one. Of the, I think this is the last one until like new nightmare that Wes has been attached to. Okay. Hence is why it's actually good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the best of the franchise. I actually think it's better than the original. Um, I know it's probably the fan favorite of the franchise also. So it's not like me. I know I'm not crazy saying that. Great music. Decent score. Uh, there's a few times where the score gets a little fucking wacky. I, I did like the score. I forgot to mention that. And I did like the score. But do you understand now what I said in Scream 2 when I went, this sounds like Nightmare on Elm Street? I do. I do. It was straight. But the thing is that this type of score fits dreams yes. very well because it's very like, like uh, fantasy like. It's a 10. The song is a 10. The video is a 10. <laughs> um, Heather Lanningham is a 10. Robert, uh, Robert England is a 10. <laughs> Patricia. Patricia is like an 8. She, she she had her moments. I, I get Also, that. this was like her fir- one of her first. Like, yeah. she's going to be a little wishy-washy. I understand that. That's not a big deal. Also, she's 17, probably, mm-hmm. when we're making this. So I double get it. <sighs> but yeah, I so that's what we so thought. Much. And we're going to do our haunt for the first time in a while. <laughs> in... This will be 12 weeks since we've last. All right, on. so let's let's get that rust off and get started. <laughs> on delay. <laughs> All right, it's time for the hunt. But first, hey Paige. Yes. Do you know what Miss Heather Langenkamp was part of last year? What's that? She played Dazzle Feather. Mayflower and Confused Mom in My Little Pony, A New Generation. Good for her. <laughs> be that. Be those ponies, girl. That's awesome. Uh, I just wanted to bring that out there because I was just like, oh my god, she's in My Little That's Pony. Fantastic. That is um, a choice. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <clears throat> the house, though. This is actually... We usually run into an issue of there's not enough. This is like there's too much. Yeah. So I'm thinking we go <sighs> facade is Elm Street House. Yeah, but I think so I think like we go through the door, the iconic red door first. You know? Yeah, Elm Street House outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then where do we go from there? From there, we will Okay, let's see. Um, let's, you know what? I'm making the choice this time. We're going to get piggy scared. (laughs) Okay. So we go through the dining room, the dining room. And then (coughs) when we get to the dining room, we get into the carpet room. Cart stops. The walls just start to fucking just go Mm -hmm. all around you. Just got to and then Worm Freddy arrives. Oh, no. He's like, huh. But you don't escape him. Oh, we go in him. He eats oh, you. Oh, that's disgusting. Okay. Therefore, going officially into his nightmare. Okay. We double facaded. I like it. <laughs> we facaded into the house and facaded into I the like story. I like it. We're Inception-esque. <laughs> All right. So that's two, three. So we have like... Seven, eight more rooms you have to get through. So we could do the deaths. We can, you know. So let's go in order. Um, we will not do the puppet one because that one's just really hard. Okay, good. Um, we will do... We could we could ride by and then in the TV room we can have like sparks coming out. And then as we see the sparks, we drive by and we see her hanging from the TV. If you want. Or you can, like, so, like, you know how, like, you're walking? Mm -hmm. You're right. You can drive by. But you drive by on the sense, on the thing of you're going past the room as it's happening. So you get, like, the welcome to prime time. Yeah. 
and then you turn into another room. Okay. You turn into like what you know what like the. You turn into the group meeting room <laughs> because we have to have some time in the group meeting. Okay. Room. Do we get the little pendulum sound? We get the pendulum, yes, and then we get the room crushing nice. in. Nice. Nice. On us, it's like it's hot. It's frego. Um, and then you ready for this in a movie in a haunt first you fall yes i was picturing that too nice into the ground Mm -hmm. you know what happens you're back in the room where you got swallowed okay but now it's perfectly normal again you continue forward or you, you continue to the next room ah okay what's next you know what? No. You go into a door and then you get um Taryn. Okay. That's really sad. Oh, well, not not like you, the Taryn area, not her okay, dying. Okay, thank God. Like the area. Okay. Yeah, the, like the, the area where she dies. The alleyway. Yeah. And then he comes out as a bum and comes out at you. He's like, I'm Rah. Freddy Rar. Okay. Uh we skip Will because this is very boring. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we eventually, we get, the next area we get to is we kind of just get to, um, you know what? I got a better idea. Remove Taryn. Remove the room before. You fall. But when you fall, you fall into his boiler room. All right. And then we see Joey hanging. We see Joey hanging. And then as you're continuing, you see... Freddy acknowledges you, but he doesn't come at you. He just takes his shirt and opens it and shows you his faces. And we hear the screaming from the souls. Nice. Okay. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Then. (laughs) Then. The mirror room. Oh, all right. Where Freddy's in all the mirrors and reaching out and trying to grab you the entire time. He just is in different mirrors. Mm, I want to hear go. what I want to hear yeah. the gang screaming too. Yes. Yeah. And then you go through the door. And you've awoken. Just in time for a skeleton fight, bitch. <laughs> The final scare of the house, Skeleton Man, looking at you going, hey. <laughs> with, the, with the shovel. <laughs> the shovel. Roll credits on the house. Okay, so that's <laughs> literally how we end. All right. We end. I'm ending crazy. I'm ending ridiculous. <laughs> As the movie is. So that's on point. You know what's weird is I'm like, oh, there's not a lot of Freddy. There's not a lot of Freddy in the movie. No, it's about the kids. It is, which is rare because usually with like a car- like with a um, slasher, they like to focus on like iconic slashers. Right. So like the, night- the Friday movies really put a lot of time on Jason. But um, not bad. Texas Chainsaw really likes Leatherface. I like I like the linearness, and I thought it was good. And we fall for the first time yeah. ever. Yeah, but it fits. But here's the thing, you know what happens? You're leaving the house. And as you're leaving the house and the skeleton's going, <laughs> you kids, you get like a Universal Studios leaving a ride moment. Dream warriors. Dream warriors. Yes. Two, three, four. Don't wanna dream no more. That's the only and way like to over the speakers. I love it. And that's how you leave. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Love the house. Uh, 10 out of 10. I would 10. ride that ride. Great house. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I would ride that. I hate falling. I'll still do it. The one time I took you on um, Tower of Terror, Tower of Terror, you hated it. You I, hated I every loved everything before the drop. So, <laughs> <laughs> like the ad- I love the aesthetic. My favorite, my least favorite part of that house. You know, what? let me just get into this real quick. My least favorite part of that ride is when the doors open, and you get blasted with. Oh, heat. the Florida heat! It's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> You're like, oh god! <laughs> we're out. I, I didn't have to tell her when we're outside. They, this the wind like blows it into your face, and you get it. You get out of that ride, and you're like, you know what? I hated it, but I did it, and I can say I've done it at least yes, once. Exactly. And you did a penny press as like a commemorative <laughs> moment that like I've done this. I survived this shit. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think this house was really good. Um, and let's let's get to our closing, huh? 
Yes. yes. All right, everybody. That will do us for our Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warrior special. Uh, thank you for joining us for the first time on Spotify. This is our special to do the opening for that. Uh, next, we're starting our middle season, our 1.5 season of invasions, home invasions for the most it, part. If you wanted to know how that came, that was we cut all of Friday out, and therefore we had to think of movies that just would replace Friday. Exactly. So we kind of have a little theme going. Our next movie will be Vacancy. That's with... Uh, Luke Wilson, I think is his name. Yes. It's Owen Wilson's brother. It's Luke, yeah. And Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, so that's going to be... As a married couple. A wild that time. Sense? Yeah. Um, so please join us. You can join us here on Spotify. Uh, please subscribe, like, rate, whatever they do here on Spotify. And if you want to hear our past episodes, uh, that some of them will be making it on here in the near future. Eventually. Uh, please go follow us on YouTube, Movie in a Haunt, uh, over there. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right. So that will do it for yeah. us. We'll see you next time. <sighs> Let's just have a little... Can I just have, can I just have one thing? Oh, okay. When you said that's it and we're going into season 1.5, I just realized it's going to be like two to three years before we can come back to Friday <laughs> and Nightmare, and I'm so sad. Well, we'll get there eventually. We can even do Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's a whole franchise. Yeah. But until then, uh, we'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.